Mm. Now, what I want to get across to you is that this place that's in the news so often, tell me if you can, if you can, do we have enough light on this? I don't know if you can see this right here. This place that's in the news so often, and it's otherwise, it's otherwise known as Gaza, right? Gaza, and we all know Gaza, you understand, Gaza has been in the news um, a lot as of as of late. Do we have this in uh, full focus? Let's see if we, yeah, Gaza has been in the news as of late. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to go to one of our reference sources. Of course, this reference, particular reference source has been dismissed by the other Jews mainly. You understand? But black Hebrews and, and Israelites who know. Some Israelites may be even rejected too, but they're too much on the 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 Khazar Judaica misinformation. You understand? And they need to really start to, to get their get their water from their own spring and from their own fountain. Some of them are too much into the the um the modern Judaism. You understand, or Masoretic Judaism, you understand, where the round Hebrew has been squared by Ezra, so forth and so on, and they don't want to recognize their, their Ethiopian Hebraic roots. There are those kind of Jews out there. Some of the black Hebrew Israelites are like that, although the basic premise of their argument is true. You understand, the basic premise of their argument that we so-called black people in the Americas and the Caribbean are the, are the biblical Hebrews and Israelites, that's true. Now this also is part of this is part of our story. A, re, a really a main part. This is really where our kingdom authority comes into play. You understand in such documents as this. Let's give you a a, a pic of this. Mm -hmm. Now we look at this brother who they who they innocently executed right here. Just take that off right there. Here we go. All right, this is the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik. Right now, in this document, if you go to the index part, you'll see that it has Gaza. So let's go there and let's look at each reference for Gaza. You understand? And our claim is that Gaza belongs to Ethiopia. Gaza historically belongs to Ethiopia. And unfortunately, um, the careless Ethiopians are not making their claims on that region. Now, what do we propose? We propose actually a real peace, you understand? A real, not a peace that is, but a peace that, according to the Imperial Majesty, peace is not an is. Peace is a becoming. There are many calculations that one must weigh, but the basic facts of the matter must be laid out initially, firstly, and foremostly. So let's Look up Gaza for a moment. And those who have a couple of the guest, especially a Wallace Budge version, please go get your copy of it and look this up as well. So let's go to Gaza for a moment. So here we are, Gaza. Now, Gaza is mentioned one, two, three, four, about five times. All right, five times. Now, Gaza being mentioned five times. Let's go to the very first mention of Gaza. The very first mention of Gaza is on page XXXVI or page 36. And this is from our um, new edition of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. Go to www.lojsociety.org. Click on the books link and you can see some of the new books that we currently have available. And this is, and this is one of them. You understand? It's a very um, good printing of it, if we can, if we can so say, Yovis. And the Wallace Budge translation, based on the good is that we have had an option to review, and hopefully we'll be able to have that also printed and published soon. The the good is that is the text that that Wallace Budge, you understand, would have worked from. You understand? The actual good is text is very good and when you're able to do that you can see that his translation is probably better of the Kubr Neges than some of the translators of King James or the King James Bible especially in certain areas. This is not to say William Tyndall. William Tyndall did an excellent work and that is one Christian brother 
that um, we pray for for his soul. You understand because he really was martyred for the testimony of the faith. Now here on page uh, 36, let's go to page XXXVI. On XXXVI, it says this right here. It gives a summary, and it says that in Ethiopic literature, this son, the firstborn son, Minyalik, this son, uh, Minyalik, or Minyalik, was born. All right, in Ethiopic literature, this son is often called Welde Tebib, uh, son of the wise man, to signify the wise man that is uh, Shlomo or Solomon, or he's called Ibn Hakim, as well as Baina Lichem. You understand? Or Lichem, Lichem, Baina Lichem or Lichem. Um, Ibn Al Hakim is also one of his names in the Arabic. He's Ibn Al Hakim, or the son of the wise man, also to symbolize, um, to refer to uh, King Solomon. Now it says, when the boy reached early manhood, he pressed Makeda to allow him to go see his father Solomon in Jerusalem, and his importunity was so great that at length, in other words, he kept, he, he was diligent on asking concerning his father, and then at length, um, Makeda gave him, his mother Makeda, the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, gave him the ring which Solomon had given her and sent him thither under the care of, of, of Tamrin, or some say Tamrin, you know, saying Tamrin. Then it says, on his arrival at Gaza, the people in the city and everywhere in the district recognized his striking likeness to Solomon and almost royal honors were paid to him by them. So there were people you understand, who had, even in the time of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, who inhabited this region. Now, it does not mention these people as being Beta Israel, which is one of the curious points that makes us believe that perhaps some of the, the Palestinian ancestors or, or some of the Arab ancestors of the Palestinian and other people were people who inhabited that particular region. Now, that's the first brief quote right there. So let's go to the next quote, and the next quote on Gaza is 41. So now we're getting into the actual text when we go to page um, 41. So here on page 41, this is a, under a chapter that says how the young man arrived, how the young man, speaking of Minulik, how he arrived. So here, once again, it touches on um, Gaza. It basically describes the appearance of, of um, Solomon's son, how many people took um, Solomon's son for, as I said, dead ringer for Solomon himself, and Solomon said, no, he is more like my father, Father David. So this is where um, Minulik, the son of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, got the name David. This is how, why we call him David the Second. In other words, he is he is David the Second or Dagmawi Dawit. Dawit is also one of his names. Now let's go to page seventy-eight. This is just a wrap up. We want to get to our main point right here, and our main point is that the region that we know that's always in the news, Gaza, belongs to Ethiopia. In other words, Ethiopia, in a sense in a very real sense, in a very important sense, is as an absentee landlord. They are an absentee landlord for that particular land. You understand? And this is a very important claim because if one seeks to dismiss this particular book, they're going to have to, and this particular testimony, the Queen of Sheba and some menu like the Kibbutz and the Guest, they're going to have to prove it. And so far, everyone has, that's attempted to prove it all they can prove is maybe a typo here or there, which is not as much and far less than their typos and their mistakes, you understand, within the authorized versions of the Bible. You understand, so who are we to believe or accept as true? So here on page 78, this speaks about how the wagon was given to Ethiopia, 
how the wagon was given to Ethiopia. And this is chapter 53 in the Kibr Negev. And we're going to read a portion of this concerning our claims. It says, And they halted by Gaza, the city of the mother of the king, which Solomon the king had given to the queen of Ethiopia when she came to him. So let's understand this. It says that, and they had halted by Gaza, which is the city of the mother of the king. The mother which king? The mother of King Solomon. Gaza was, was her um, home city. Or is it speaking about the queen of Sheba? But it's obviously clear that Gaza was the home city of King Solomon's mother, Bersabe, or Bathsheba. And that was given to the queen of Ethiopia. Therefore, it is Ethiopian territory and it's Ethiopian property. And the careless Ethiopians have avoided too long this important claim. You know what I'm saying? This is a very, very important claim which can powerful, have a powerful and a positive impact on reshaping this whole geopolitical discussion. Even to bring up this issue, of course, there are many who would try to dismiss this out of hand. You understand? But to dismiss this out of hand means you must dismiss this based on some fact. You understand? And then you must also prove your facts and your quotations, like the Jews have a lot of quotations saying that Jerusalem was always their capital. You understand? From, from X amount of time. Well, the Jerusalem, the capital, the Beta Israel, you understand, of the northern ten tribes, they had an alternative capital, but you're speaking of Judah, you understand, and Judah, the claims for Judah are firmer and stronger with this little black nation and with Ethiopia than with the European, the German, and the Polish Jews. I mean, that is really very, very clear right there. But it's a point that is not champion, and it's we who are not championing that point. It's we who are not teaching our children, who are not doing our own research on this point and building up on our truth. And that is largely because of the state of ignorance. You understand? Ignorance of the soul is its sin. You understand? Ignorance of the soul is its sin. And the only solution for that is knowledge. Now, this is very important. This quote right here is very important because then it demonstrates here that, and from there, they came in one day to the border of uh, Gibbet, Gibbet, which is uh, Ethiopic way of saying Egypt, the name of which is uh, Misrin, Misrin, Misrin. And when the sons of the warriors of Israel saw that they had come in one day a distance of 13 days' march, and that they were not tired or hungry or thirsty, neither man nor beast, and that they all felt that they had eaten and drunk their full. These sons of the warriors of Israel knew and believed that this thing was from God. This thing was from Ha Elohim. And they said to their king, Let us let us let down the wagons, for we have come to the water of Ethiopia. So when they had come to the Nile, they recognized that this is the water that actually comes from the highland, the roof of Africa, from Ethiopia, from Ethiopia. This is the Takazi, which floweth down from Ethiopia and watereth the valley of Egypt. And Egypt from ancient times was a colony of ancient uh, Tobia or Ethiopia, or Ethiopia also called Kush. But, but talking about original Kush or the Tob, the Tob land. And we've touched on Tobia as the archaic name for Ethiopia. Therefore, Ethiopia or Ethiopia originally does not come from Greek, but the Greeks heard the archaic name Tobia, and from there, you understand, they interpreted in Greek Ethiopia to mean burnt faces. You understand? So we really need to recognize that Ethiopia has a more archaic reference you understand, within both the Hebraic and in the Ethiopic prior to the so-called Greeks. And it says, and they let down their wagons there and set up their tents. So right here on page um, 78 of this particular book, the Kibber Negev, the Queen of Sheba and Only Son, Minulik, because remember what prophecy was the Moshiach, 
our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember what Yeshua HaMoshiach says. He says, the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment. He's saying that the queen of Sheba is also a sign of the last days and a sign of the time. And with Ethiopians at home and abroad recognizing that we have a God-given right and responsibility to peacekeep even in this Middle Eastern region, you understand, which we might think that it has nothing to do with us, but Asia and Africa, Afro-Asian is one place. The ancients saw Afro-Asia. We make this division between the Red Sea today, but this is not the way the ancients saw that geography. You understand? It's because other Ferengi which have come in have converted to the religion like, like the Jews and, and others, and they're coming from their Eurocentric northern perspective and imposing their ideas on a region, not understanding the indigenous customs and, the, and recognizing who are the real power players. And Ethiopia still, and maybe even more so in this time, Ironically, than before, we had a figurehead. We had that symbol in his majesty at that time, but even more so, Ethiopia has a very strong, you understand, global position, but we, even in diaspora, are looking for the Ethiopians to get off their carelessness, recognize who we are like we recognize Ethiopia's importance, and let us really get down to the business, the global business in really shaping a new world order, you understand, a world order in which there exists true righteousness, true democracy, and that cannot happen, you understand, from the Gentile world dominion. They have too much bloodshed and wickedness on their hands, and their time, their world system time is coming to an end. But they are trying to illegally, spiritually illegally, continue their world order by even proposing a new world order and trying to stand at the head of that new world order. That's what we say to ones and ones. Don't get it twisted. There must be a new world order. But whose new world order is it really? Because the whole concept of a new world order, we can trace that back to 1776. And we can see in that day and time, that was a new world order. And this present order that we're in is still an outgrowth or byproduct of that world order. And their world order has failed. I mean, look at the geo-global economic position of the world, and they cannot fix it because they refuse to recognize the Beta Israel. They refuse to recognize the black sheep. They refuse to recognize who is really the racial Israel that they enslaved in the Americas and the Caribbean for 400 plus years. But we can't just hold our breath and wait for them. We have to recognize who we are and take the proactive steps that we need to take. The first step is education. We must become informed. The next step is to become involved after we become informed. And there's a lot of, 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 of necessary involvements within our commonwealth to get involved, involved with. You understand? So there's different people who have different skills, have different gifts, have different, different responsibilities. But the first step, and this is a part of that first step, is education. Gaza belongs to Ethiopia. Gaza belonged to Ethiopia nearly 3,000 years ago. You understand? And it was given to Ethiopia, the queen of Ethiopia, by King Solomon of Jerusalem. And there's more proof to this as well. We're going with our first evidence, and that's the queen of Sheba and only some Minulik, which the Gentiles or the Eurocentrics like to dismiss for a lot of frivolous and fraudulent reasons. And if one white European Jew or Khazar could produce something like this of their own, you understand, even with the same uh, assumed and, and um, imagined faults or errors or little typos in it, they would be rallying behind this and saying it's the greatest discovery since um, butter and toast. You understand? Exactly. They would be saying stuff like that. But now, let's go to the next part of this. The next part of this talk about the king and the soldiers when Solomon was, 
trying to catch up with the Ark of the Covenant. And there's one more quote, and that's 163. So 88, we just touched on 88 and 163. Um, I'm actually, uh, 163, yeah, 163. 163. <clears throat> this is a very important point. I know many would laugh off and seek to dismiss this, but that should prove to one how important it is. Now, this, this final quote, so this is the final quote. So, so far, page 78 in the Kibbutz and the Guest, Queen of Sheba and Only Son, Minulik, which is from chapter 53. And um, here, the, the next quote from chapter 92 are key, are very, very important. That's why we said we will try to dedicate a video that just will say and will try to address that Gaza belongs to ancient Ethiopia, firstly, and that modern Ethiopia, through the AU, the African Union, should annex that territory, make, full, make its claims, but seek to annex that territory right there and to establish, you understand, to establish a peacekeeping in that particular region. Now, ones will, will, like I said, ones might last this off, so forth and so on, in the West, but this is very important for those in the East, once becoming more informed about it, it can also, excuse me, dramatically change Ethiopia's geopolitical situation. You understand? Now, whether the present Ethiopian government would have the, the fray, you understand, or would have the balls to do this, is probably a question. But definitely seeing that these are positive claims, there will be a government. It must start first from us as the people. We as the people, Ethiopians, at home and abroad, Ethiopian Hebrews, and elect Rastafari, we must begin to discuss these issues. We must begin to dialogue and further prove these sort of issues. As we start to prove it, as well as propose, make our own proposals, when the Gentiles and the so-called Jews and others fail, and they will fail, in fact, we are in a time of failure, you understand, for the so-called world system. The world system is at a point of failure because they have ignored all of this, all of the good influences, you understand, that ones like ourselves and others have brought forward and all based on, on racist, clearly racist reasons. You understand, like they dismiss the fact that we are Hebrews, even black Jews, out of racist reasons. You understand? Out of racist reasons, they have people around the world, white people mainly, that said, you know, I just found out that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Jew, even though they don't have any clear indication of Jewry, but because they are European, they're accepted, they're given funded, so forth and so on, and those funds for them come primarily, are primarily diverted from programs to the poor and the minority, but mainly black people and particularly black men, women, and children. You understand? Black men, women, and so they get funds cut. So if you see a lot of these fundings in the poor inner city areas, it's because many of these funds or possible funds are being siphoned off and reallocated to foreign projects, including the state of Israel is one of them. So that means if they can take bread out of our babies' mouths to fund a special project of the religious right and others, speaking of the state of Israel, then it's about high time that we recognize the half of the story concerning us, you understand, and start to put the wheels into motion, you understand, and start to really dialogue about this and, 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 and to get down to... To, to the business, job business that we need to get down to. Now, this particular chapter right here, chapter 92, that is named How They Renewed the Kingdom of David, this particular chapter, it lays out the boundaries of the king of Ethiopia. Now, over the millennia, you understand, over the millennia particularly, in, in the Horn of Africa region. It's a very interesting history. It's also a very bloody history. There's a lot of wars that have gone on against that island, against that spiritual, in a sense, island of Judeo-Christianity. 
and we're speaking about holy Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? So if we want to look at Ethiopia today on the map, it's look like a, not a small place, but much smaller than it is, especially according to this map here. We need to understand the, the intermediate history, what has gone on, and the various different enemies that Ethiopia, that the holy Ethiopians had to face in order to preserve and to protect our African Zion, our African Zion. But please pay attention to chapter 92 that is, that is um, um, subtitled, you can say, How They Renewed the Kingdom of David. I'm going to read it from, from, from the start, so please bear with me on this. It says, And Azariah, Azariah, uh, Azariah, said, bring hither the jubilee trumpets, and let us go to Zion, let us go to Zion, and there, we'll, and there we will make new the kingdom of our Lord, the kingdom of our Lord David, of Dawit, of David. And he took the oil of sovereignty and filled the horn therewith, and he anointed David with the unguent, or the ungent, the unguent, that is to say, with the oil of sovereignty. And they blew horns and pipes and trumpets and beat drums and sounded all kinds of musical instruments. And there were singing and dancing and games and displays of horses and shield men. And all the men and women of the people of the country of Ethiopia were present, small and great. And the little blacks, the little blacks are the pygmies, you could say the dinkoch, 6,000 in number and virgin women whom Azariah had chosen for the woman of Zion by the law, for the woman of Zion by the law. So that's like a sisterhood right there. We can touch on that a little bit more, which is very necessary for our mothers, daughters, wives, and, and sisters, whom David the king had destined for the service of the table and banquets in the royal fortress when he should go up thereto clad in raiment, clad in raiment of fine gold. And in this wise was renewed the kingdom of David, or the Mengista Dawit, the Mengista David, the son of Solomon, the king of Israel, in the capital city in Mount Makeda. In Mount Makeda, some say that this could be Aksum, another name for Aksum, in the house of Zion, the house of Zion, where the law was established for the first time. The law of the Beta Israel was established for the first time by the king of Ethiopia, by the king of Ethiopia. And then, when he had completed the establishing of the law, of the law is to say the Torah, of Orit, of Torah, they made according to what they had seen in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, the law in the house of Zion for the nobles of the kingdom, and for those who were inside, and for those who were outside, and for the people, and for the islands, and for the cities, and for the provinces, and for all the inhabitants, and for all their tribal kinsfolk, they made ordinances in the same manner. And thus, now here's the key part we want to pay attention to. Here in the 92nd chapter of the Kibra Neges, in the translated form of the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, it's laying out the, the boundary, a portion of the boundary now of this particular renewed kingdom of David, that imperial Ethiopia, the Ethiopia of Haile Selassie, represents. This is why this is so important, and although it appears as though the enemies, the antichrist, the haters have won, they have won nothing. They have won nothing. Here it says, and thus the eastern boundary of the kingdom of king of the king of Ethiopia is the beginning of the city of Gaza. So the beginning 
of the kingdom of the king of Ethiopia is the beginning of the city of Gaza in the land of Yehuda, in the land of Judah. That is Jerusalem, Jerusalem, or Jerusalem. And its boundary is the lake of Jericho. And it passes on by the coast of its sea to Laba and Saba along the sea, to Laba and Saba. Some may say that's Yemen, actually. That's part of the Yemen link. And its boundary goeth down to Bessis and Asnate. And its boundary is the Sea of the Blacks and Naked Men. And goeth up Mount uh, Kebere, uh, Neon into the Sea of Darkness. That is to say, the place where the sun setteth. The place where the sun, not where it rises, but where the sun setteth. Now, this also appears to actually be all of Africa. This appears to actually start in the Middle East and then go down the Red Sea, include Arabia, and then also dovetail Africa because the sun doesn't set in the east, but it sets in the west. So that sea is actually what we would know today as the Ethiopic, or what was known yesterday, as the Ethiopic Ocean, which today is the southern, they call the Southern Atlantic Ocean. So when the slave trade took place, it wasn't called the Atlantic. When slave trade took place, it was called the Ethiopic Ocean. This is why many of the blacks brought over to the west even in the record, are ascribed as being Ethiopian. So there's a greater extent of the true kingdom of the king of kings. Many of the Keyless Ethiopians, they don't have a clue, but we hope that they get a clue about this. Now, the chapter goes on to say that its boundary extended to Fenael and to um, Lesifala, and its borders are the lands near the garden of the garden or paradise, where there is food and plenty and abundance of cattle, and near Fenekin, and its boundaries reach as far as Zawel, and passes on to the Sea of India. So it's showing from coast to coast. We're seeing both wings of the extent of the kingdom of David, which is the kingdom of the king of kings of Ethiopia. You understand? So now we're going to the Sea of India, and its boundary is as far as the Sea of Tarsus, perhaps Tarsus, which now is going around to the to the north of Africa. Because some say Tarsus, there's a two opinions about this. One is Tarsus is Spain. The others say that Tarsus might be the Far East, possibly uh, Japan. And in its remote question, is it put here by the translator, part, lieth the sea of Midian until it cometh to the country of Gaza. So what we're seeing is kind of like the old maps that some of the early European travelers and the people of that region had, had these old maps which showed the world into like three different regions almost like a triquarter but turned upside down or trinity shape where it had one part Africa, Asia, and then like Europe or something like that. And then in the center it had Jerusalem. You understand? So when we look at that and we think about this right here, we can see that it's going from Gaza, beginning from Gaza, going around one side of, 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 that encompasses Africa and the Middle East and then taking it the opposite way also around bringing it back to Gaza and the, and, the, and the Middle East. So Gaza is like the capstone to that, and there's a role that Ethiopia plays in that, and we Ethiopians at home and abroad must become knowledgeable about this fact, that Gaza belongs to Ethiopia, and we are saying that the righteous Ethiopians you understand, must investigate this issue and also get involved in this particular issue in that region as it has effects, both positive effects if we get involved or adverse effects if we continue not to. In fact, that could change the whole dynamic with the 
so-called um, Shabab. That, that would change the whole dynamic with Shabab, with the Middle East, with the Horn of Africa, with terrorism, so forth and so on, because then Ethiopia would be proactive and also have scripture. You understand? Know Being the people of the book, they would have scripture and use scripture to inform their politics. The Jews do this, so-called Jews, even though they mis misquote and, and, and twist and distort certain things in their favor. You understand? Know even with us as the black Hebrews, they do this. And the Americans also have scripture that they actually have. Though they say we're dealing with politics, not religion. But then about certain policies, it comes down to their so-called religious scriptures interpretation. So why should we divorce our spirituality and our divine heritage from the reality of our geopolitical politics in the world today. But let's just conclude this right here. So it says that until it cometh to the country of Gaza, and it says, and its boundary is the place where our enumeration began. Its boundary is, a pl is the place where the enumeration in this 92nd chapter of the Kibr Negest actually began. And here's the final um, sentence for this particular chapter here. It says, and... Moreover, the dominion of the king of Ethiopia belongeth to him and to his seed forever. So there is no um, uh, end date to say that, okay, because it hasn't been in full effect in modern times, therefore it should not be put into full effect in these modern times. And, and to some of you all out there, especially um, the Ethiopian and Ethiopian Hebrews and um, even many of the Rastafari, another point that we'd like to make, you really need to get a, uh, get a copy of this, especially the Wallace Budge version, you understand, the Kibbutz and the Guest. And it's, let's just put this down. It is chapter, um, we're going to the, we went to the Kibbutz, all right, um, um, went to the Kubra, excuse me, went to the Kubra, and then, I don't like how to do that good, okay, went to the Kubra, and then, Neges, the Kubra Neges, the Queen of Sheba, only son, Minyamin. Now, um, when you look at the chapters, the key chapters that we touched on is, uh, chapter 53, right? That's where in chapter 53 it says that Gaza was given as a, as a wedding gift to the Queen of Sheba by King Solomon. And chapter uh, 92 now gives an enumeration, gives an enumeration of this particular, of this particular kingdom. And it's, it's very beautiful to look at this enumeration. And I think I've seen some old maps that actually the, the old map really, really demonstrates the enumeration we find in chapter 92. So Gaza, you know what I'm saying? Gaza in that sense, Gaza belongs to Ethiopia. This is what is plain and simple. And the one whom it belongs to in this modern geopolitical situation has little to no involvement. Now, it's interesting that we have a Tigra, a Tigra government um, in Ethiopia today. Presently, there's a Tigra government. Now, why we say it's interesting, because the whole Kibur Neges, you know, saying this whole story, this whole drama, we can say, it has its birth in the northernmost uh, Shemitic regions, such as Tigra. You know saying? It's from Tigra that actually we can safely accredit the birth of this particular um, saga and drama. In fact, we have a, the Tigra version. There's the Tigra, which is some say an older version, you know what I'm saying, of, of this. And this here, when it was put together, was a later recession, but this was created. This is, the, this is our national saga. So to have for foreign foreigners, uh, goyim, gentiles, um, what's the word? Um, foringoch, uh, foringes, and foringes, and have foreigners telling us 
are trying to to tell us that this is not a historical document is a lie they try to tell tell you and me and I and I. Much in here, you understand, has been proven and they know it. But what they've managed to do in this modern time is to make Ethiopians believe that this is this is just a legend that's just like a fairy tale. Like try to make it seem like it's like Cinderella or something like that. No, this is a this is a true story. Otherwise, they are hard pressed to explain what Christ meant when Christ said that the Queen of the South shall rise up in judgment with this generation. Why would he pull that out? Why would he point the the, the Queen of the South? What relevancy did she have even in that day? We learn much relevancy because a lot of the books they call the apocryphal books and a lot of other scriptures that we find only in Ethiopia, like um, um, the book of Enoch and the book of Jubilees, were preserved by the Ethiopian Christians and even some of the books preserved by the Ethiopian uh, Jews or the Falashis are also very interesting. However, many of those were stolen when they airlifted some of the last of the Beit Israel to, to, to the state of Israel because a lot of documents were on one plane and some of the Beit Israel are still complaining. The Ethiopian Jews in Israel are still complain that many of their ancient documents they still have not seen anymore and they're being studied at Hebrew University and other universities. But many of the, the, the people to whom these documents belong Speaking of the, the black Jews of Ethiopia, they haven't got to see a lot of their documents as well. So we just want to put that out because some of the brothers and sisters told us about that. We looked it up. We found more information on that. And that's a real important point, stealing people's antiquities. You understand? Um, nothing gives the so-called Jews that right to steal our antiquities from our people. So we need to also give them the support in that because there's much wealth you know, this is a testament. This is a testament to our story. You understand? It's not coming from white people. Maybe it was Wallace Budge and others who translated it, but we also have access to the actual documentation that he translated from. You understand? Many of us know to read and translate and interpret, and there's others that can verify our work. And overall, his work is a very good and fundamental work. So we need to justify our own history because a people without um, any roots is like a is 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 like a tree. You understand? People without knowledge of self is like a tree without any roots. You understand? And it's past time that we turn our back on those curses for disobedience and return into the barakat or the blessing for us as one lost but now found Beit Israel. So, Ine, once again, I am Inene Aras Yadinos Tefari. I am Wendem Yadin. So once again, my brothers and sisters, Shalom Ras Tefari.